you are welcome to the second lecture of experimental physics 2. Since first lecture mainly I have discussed uh, what is the aim of this uh, uh, course. Also I have uh, shown you the broad syllabus for this experimental physics 2. So, today uh, let us just uh, look back to the uh, experimental physics 1 what we have learned there. So, basically let us summarize the experimental physics 1. So, there in experimental physics 1 in experimental physics 1 we have discussed and demonstrated the experiments on mechanics, general properties of matter, thermal properties of matter, sound and electricity and magnetism. So, there are many experiments we have demonstrated in the laboratory. So, in mechanics oscillation is an important topic and there we have done some experiment on spring mass system and pendulums because spring mass system and pendulums are classic examples of, of mechanics. Uh, so, this, this is the spring and one mass hanged from the spring. So, this it can be vertical, it can be horizontal. So, this this is basically spring mass system. This, this is a simple pendulum, a mass is hanged from a thread, then it will oscillate. So, this is basically simple pendulum and this if you take a body uh, of any shape and then if you uh, pivoted this body at a at a point and then also this this body can oscillate so this type of uh, uh, object is called compound pendulum this type of object when oscillates so this will tell this uh, compound pendulum and then this also uh, two pendulums when they are coupled with a spring. So, then we tell this the coupled pendulum. So, they also their oscillation is slightly different from the from the uh, single uh, pendulum. Also this false pendulum, false pendulum we have uh, we have learned that a uh, that a disk is oscillating in a in a magnetic field and this is a classic example of of, of, of uh, free oscillation damped oscillation and forced oscillation so this is the this is the beauty of this uh, false pendulum so all of this we have discussed in experimental physics 1 so, what we have learned about, about these things, let us uh, summarize it. So, so how to how to measure how to measure spring constant. Okay. You have a spring. Now the spring is elongated after applying a force F and it is elongated by by x ok. So, what is the spring constant? Spring constant is the basically force required to elongate it or compressed or contracted required to elongate or contract the spring by unit length ok. So, basically this uh, spring constant is is f by x Okay, when f is proportional to x. So, 
f is proportional to x. So, f equal to uh, minus k x. So, this k is constant it is basically called spin constant and this negative sign is for uh, for this uh, restoring force because you are applying your restoring force is opposite to the uh, to the displacement. So, this f is basically you are you have applied this force f and equal force act opposite to this applied force that is called the basically restoring force that is the basically it is the uh, because of this this is the elastic property of the material. So, so this k is basically f by x if we neglect this negative sign and this f it can be mg when you take this one vertical the spring mass system when you take vertical. So, this spring and you applied mass here. So, this weight w will be mg because of this weight it will extend it the spring will extend right. So, how much it is extended you can measure from a scale right. Now, uh, in experiment basically we do not take only one data. So, basically k equal to m g by x. So, for a particular mass g is known x you will measure from the scale extension of the spring. So, you can calculate this k but in experiment always we take more data to reduce the errors ok. So, and we take help of graph. So, basically we will apply different mass, we will apply different mass ok that means different weight, different force and for that force what is the elongation that we will uh, measure from the scale for different mass for different weight. So, we can plot m g versus uh, displacement, m g versus uh, elongation, extension. So, then you will get a basically straight line from the straight line you can find out the slope. So, this slope is nothing but the spring constant, the slope del m g by del x. So, this is nothing but k and this the k is the spin constant. So, that way one can find out the spin constant and that we have demonstrated in the laboratory ok. So, this the generally we tell this the static method and any people can use another method this is the called dynamic method basically the spring uh, the spring mass system just if you displace this disturb this mass or just extend it and leave it then it will oscillate ok. So, if you can measure the uh, time period for this oscillation then you can calculate the spring constant. So, basically uh, f equal to minus k x. So, d 2 x by d t square equal to omega square x equal to 0. So, where omega square equal to k by m right and omega is 2 pi by t square. So, square. So, you are getting this t square equal to 4 pi square by k m this relation you are getting. So, if you use different mass for different mass if you find out the time period square of the time period if you plot along the x axis for different mass then you will get a straight line. So, this 4 pi square by k is basically slope slope. So, you can find out the slope. So, that means k equal to 4 pi square by slope. So, slope you are getting from this from this plot and pi value is known to you. 
So, you can calculate k. So, this is the dynamic uh, method. So, this is the this, this is the way one can find out the spring constant of a uh, of a spring. Okay. So, what is the importance of spring uh, in in uh, in uh, in in application uh, of, of of our daily life? So, we are quite familiar about the application of the of the spring. So, this basically there are different kinds of types of springs and their applications. So, this uh, spring generally it is uh, categorized like compression spring. So, it can compress the spring can compress easily. So, extension spring ok. So, this is the this is the spring it is the it can extend it is used for extension uh, where you need uh, to extend the spring for application. So, this this type of spring is used then torsion spring. So, this is the uh, this kind of spiral kind of uh, spring this called torsion spring. Okay. So, this is the way uh, the spring are uh, classified also uh, it is classified in other way different way also it is uh, called linear rate spring linear rate spring or constant rate spring means th this uh, patches are equidistant. So, this called linear rate spring variable rate spring. So, this uh, basically uh, this patches distance are different ok. So, it is called vari variable rate, sp rate spring. So, it is a it is a varying this uh, distance between uh, the successive uh, uh, loops. Okay. And then also another type is a dual rate spring. So, dual rate spring. So, this some portion is have uh, this type say hard spring and some portion is this type. So, this may be this part is soft spring soft part. Okay. So, this soft and hard both part in a one single spring. So, it is called dual rate spring. Okay. So, uh, whatever the different types of spring is used for different purposes. So, some of the applications you are familiar. So, uh, battery box in battery box. So, when you place battery. So, for electrical connection. Uh, so, the spring is used I think torch if you have used uh, torch or, or radio okay, or some multimeter. Okay, where you have to put battery if you see this. So, that we are telling battery box. So, where in the instrument where we put the battery. So, there always this you have seen there is a spring because uh, the two purpose to use this spring one is it will give electrical connection because it is made of uh, metal and also it will keep it tight. Okay. So, in battery box we use spring, in pen you have seen uh, we use uh, spring clock, in clock this spring is used door closure, you have seen door closure automatically if you open the door and then leave it. So, automatically it closed, so there this uh, spring is used, so door closure matrices ok. In matrices also uh, uh, spring is used and then spring is used for shock absorber for as a shock absorber ok. In car it is used to, to minimize to damp the uh, vibration. So, this is called shock absorber in car in toys spring is used different kind of toys are made uh, using the 
uh, spring. So, there are many many kind of application of, of spring and spring constant is important for different application and how to measure the spring constant. So, that we have learned it is very simple and in laboratory easily we can measure. So, that we have demonstrated right. So, next uh, uh, pendulum simple pendulum although we have not demonstrated this uh, simple pendulum in our laboratory. I think most of you have done this experiment in class 12. So, uh, but this simple pendulum is basically used for or measuring the uh, acceleration due to gravity to g value. Okay. So, this very simple experiment and it is very important in the sense that using this simple experiment one can find out this universal constant g acceleration due to gravity. Right. So, simple pendulum is basically a mass hanged from a thread. So, this uh, from this fixed platform thread is hanged basically mass is hanged through this thread. So, length of this thread is L and mass of this bob is m right. So, force will act downwards. So, that is m g. Now, when you will displace this bob by angle theta. So, at this place this force will act downwards m g. Now, you can get two component one is along this thread. So, this will be m g cos theta because this angle is theta right and perpendicular component will be m g sin theta. So, this m g sin theta is this force is responsible is basically restoring force. So, it will try to take back this bob from uh, to the original position. Okay. So, now if you write the equation in terms of theta. So, like m d 2 x by d t squares equal to force. So, here basically it is not linear displacement, it is the basically rotation about this uh, axis. Okay. So, basically then change of theta, change of angle with time. So, d 2 theta by d t square and this uh, moment of inertia I is moment of inertia. So, when displacement x is replaced by angle theta then mass is replaced by the moment of inertia right. So, in linear motion whatever the uh, function of mass see in rotational motion the same function uh, uh, is, is basically represented by the by the moment of inertia i right. So, i d 2 theta by d t square equal to now this is not force equal to basically torque. So, here m g sin theta as I told this restoring force. Okay. So, torque will be this force into distance. So, distance from this point the distance is L. Okay. So, torque will be m g sin theta L right. So, these are quite familiar uh, equation to you. So, here moment of inertia I equal to m L square m L square the distance and sin theta theta is very small. So, sin theta one can write theta. So, this is the your equation d 2 theta by d t square plus g by L theta equal to 0 right. So, basically uh, this part is omega 0 square okay, or omega square. So, omega square equal to g by L. So, 2 pi by t equal to omega. 
so whole square ok. So, you are getting g equal to or time period t equal to 2 pi square root of l by g is very known formula ok or g equal to 4 pi square by t square l right. So, uh, if we are interested to find out the the acceleration due to gravity g ok. So, from this equation you can see so, for different length if you can measure the time period t ok. So, then we can plot t square versus l. So, we will get a straight line ok. So, we will for different length we will get different point we will get different point ok. Now, if you uh, if you find out the slope of this straight line. So, the slope will be basically t square by l slope will be t square by l that means g equal to 4 pi square t square by l. So, that is slope. So, slope we will get from this straight line 4 pi square is known. So, we can find out the g value right. So, this is the way one can uh, find out the uh, g value this universal constant and one can find out this value one can measure this value very accurately using this simple method this a uh, uh, beauty of the pendulum simple pendulum right. Now, compound pendulum ok. So, it is as I told if you take a object of any shape now this object is pivoted at a point P ok. Now, center of gravity say it is G and O this point is basically center of oscillation center of oscillation. So, then uh, the distance of G from P if it is small l and distance of O center of oscillation O from P if it is capital L ok. So, one can find out that G equal to 4 pi square by T square L. So, it is a so this formula is nothing but this this formula right. So, so that means, so this compound pendulum it is it is it is just simply simple pendulum if you think that whole mass whole mass is concentrated at a point O and then this mass is oscillating with respect to the point P. So, then it is the so then this O this point O it is called the center of oscillation ok and if distance L see just like a simple pendulum. So, this formula for simple pendulum it is the same formula one can use. Now, uh, but, but in principle in this case so this we have converted this system for comparison to the simple pendulum and the known formula we have written, but here this L we do not know uh, center of gravity one can find out, but we cannot find out this O directly right. So, basically this this distance L we cannot directly we cannot find out. So, L basically it is related with other factors is related with L and the radius of gyration k. So, this L basically equal to k square by L plus L ok. So, uh, so this is a quadratic equation of, of L. So, we will get two solution of L, L 1 and L 2 if you solve this one. So, 
from this quadratic equation one can get this capital L equal to L 1 plus L 2 and this k radius of gyration basically is equal to square root of L 1 L 2. Okay. So, so, what is L 1 and L 2? L 1 and L 2 basically these are two length, this is the L. So, basically two length for same time period T. So, for same time period we will get two length in this in this system in this uh, object uh, irregular shape object we will get two length L 1 and L 2 for that the time period will be same. So, that is the L 1 and L 2. Okay. So, uh, so, one has to basically find out L 1 and L 2 and how to find out that we have we have discussed and also demonstrated in the um, in the uh, laboratory. So, basically we will we'll change we will change length L we will change basically point P Okay, at different so, uh, and then we'll measure the time period t. We'll measure the time period t, right? If you plot the time period and versus this l, small l, okay, small l. So basically, distance from the uh, from p to g. So then you will see, you will you will you will get a curve like this, you will get a curve like this. Okay. Basically, I can show you, uh, if you if you plot, if you plot, so you will get a curve like, uh, like this. Okay. This is the L. Okay. If you take in opposite Direction so similarly we will get we will get this way okay curve like this I think this way so if you for same time period this is t and this is l for same time period if you choose a time period for same time period basically you will get two l okay this is one say it is l one and this is another this is l two. Similarly, this other side also L1, L2 you will get okay, L1 and L2. Then you can or L1 dash L2 dash. So, from uh, one can find out get the average one. Okay. So, we have discussed experimentally how to find out L1 and L2 and then uh, uh, basically you will see uh, this L1 and L2 and you will calculate the so basically uh, you will get the you will get the uh, capital L because L1 and L2 L1 and L2 you will get from the you will get from the curve so you can calculate capital L when you will calculate capital L then you can find out this uh, g value. So, because capital L for which t value for a as I told for a same period you will get two length L 1 L 2. So, uh, so from the graph you will choose a time period t and for that you will find out L 1 and L 2. So, from there you will get capital L. So, you know now capital L and T, so you can calculate the G. So, uh, using the using the compound pendulum, one can also find out the acceleration due to gravity G value. Okay, and also from this uh, from compound pendulum, one can find out the radius of gyration. Radius of gyration is uh, about the axis to the center of gravity. So, about the center of gravity g, what is the uh, uh, radius of the gyration that is called basically uh, yes. So, for, 
So, in this case radius of gyration is basically uh, about the axis passing through the center of gravity. So, from where it comes? It comes basically uh, when you write this equation like this. Okay. So, this moment of inertia that will be there. So, that moment of inertia basically with respect to this uh, this p because it is it will oscillate with respect to this p. So, uh, using the parallel theorem. So, basically one can so this uh, I g okay, moment of inertia with respect to uh, center of gravity I g plus then uh, mass into that small l square that distance. So, this type of relation comes. So, there basically that I g moment of inertia uh, about the axis of uh, uh, about the axis passing through the center of gravity. So, that I g ok. So, there basically this k that I g is basically it is a m k square where k is called the radius of gyration. So, that also one can find out from this uh, uh, from this experiment compound pendulum uh, experiment one can find out the uh, radius of gyration also uh, apart from the acceleration due to gravity right. So, uh, so what is the application what is the application of this uh, this pendulum ok. So, again there are uh, application uh, common application in our uh, day to day life. So, one application you know all of us are familiar this pendulum clock right pendulum clock nowadays is the we do not see much, but earlier days this the this the most common use uh, to know the time. So, this is the most common use to tell the time. Okay. So, pendulum clock was the only clock in earlier days. Then uh, seismometers. So, seismometer is another uh, I think uh, I will I will continue this discussion next class let me stop here thank you.